What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerdcastle for the next episode of Warhammer Quest where we are still knee deep in Sterling, hoping to stir up some trouble and maybe stir up some gold along the way. How, many, how long am I going to ride out that little diatribe? I think I'm going to try and ride it out for as long as possible because I enjoy doing it. He's been vomited upon, so nobody wants to stand near him. He's a troll slayer, so obviously he doesn't smell that good anyways. But with the addition of troll vomit, it's definitely gotten worse. On this side, let's see if we can kill off... Oh, good. There we go. At least he finished the job. At least he finished the job. That's all that I care about. If we can, there's actually a goblin shaman up in there that has me sort of worried. Why is he not able to shoot arrows? Did he already do that? Hmm. Oh, you're not pinned? Well, then move away from the shaman so that he can't do anything. That sounds pretty good. Yeah, that works for me. Ah, you didn't get any power anyways. Although he's probably going to make me run him down if I know how the game works. What it likes to do is it likes to put like a range guy off in the middle of nowhere doing nothing. So that you'll waste turns. I don't know if it does it intentionally or if it's a bug defect. But anyways, dudes will just like stand over here. They won't even try and close the gap. Even if they have something they can do, they'll usually just sit there. Go ahead and kill him off real quick. On this side, see if we can score a kill or dose for the Way Watcher. There it is. So he got himself a kill. On this side, I'm going to bring him over. He's got to take a turn or two to get some willpower back. But he should be able to deal a little damage right there. Oh, good. It burned him. Fantastic. He's got himself a little bit of hurt going on. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to start getting going with the heals on the main character. Or not the main character. On the main mage. There we go. I don't know who counts as the main character here. And I think if I bring it up, they'll all start arguing about it. I think what we can all agree on is that it's not the elf. The elf cannot be the main character in this story because elves are terrible. He got one magic. He used Ear We Go. And Ear We Go does what? Plus one toughness. Okay, that does it. What does goblin magic do? Although not as powerful as orc shamans, night goblin shamans practice a crude form of orcish magic drawing on the power of the wog generated by other goblins around them. Makes sense. Let's get him up right there. He's like, ooh, I like this adventure. Anyways, we'll stab over here. And we'll take a couple shots just to see. Oh, we got a miss right there. But a hit right there. I could probably bring... Actually, I don't have a whole lot I can do right there. We'll just wait. It's not a big deal. I'm not going to rearrange my entire line just to, like, get after this one guy. He's going to take a swing, do a little bit of damage. Down he goes. He's out of the way. That's going to leave us with a silver tankard, which actually sounds really badass. If I found a silver tankard, I'd be stoked. IRL, but anyways. Weird things that I've always wanted to have. A silver tankard, I think, would fit that bill nicely. We still got... If, I, if my name was Bill, every time I went to the clothing store, I would be like, this fits the bill nicely. I would do it every single time. That joke would never end. I would get so much mileage out of it. My family would hate me. They would be like, here it comes. He's going to make the joke. Here it comes. He's going to make the joke. And I'd be like, yep, here it comes. Everybody get ready. All right, so we got that over there. All right, one more turn. Hopefully we don't get waylaid again. This should be the last room, I think. Oh, no, maybe not. What do I know about adventures in the land of Warhammer Fantasy, then? Keep them moving on up behind the melee guys. Finally got that dungeon to die. Go over there. Bring this there. There we are. So everything's looking a little bit better. I mean, this is how we go through every single area, but you know what I mean. The final room has the orc boss and a couple of night gods. This is actually sort of an underwhelming fight. In all fairness, not that worried about it. Orc bosses can be kind of troublesome. It depends what level he is, in all fairness. Yeah, he's not that high of a level, so if I can set him on fire, that'd be great. Look at that right there. Look at you. Getting in there, causing damage, wreaking havoc, making all the orcs upset. Nice job, man. Nice job. You set him on fire. You missed twice. I really need you to dig deep and actually accomplish something, elf. Like, I... I'm starting to regret bringing you. Starting to regret. I mean, you don't miss as much as you know the warrior priest did. So obviously, I think you're better than him. But in terms of coolness and also style, you are still way low on the list. Oh man, that's what happens when you set an orc on fire. He gets mad. Oh, you get. You set me on fire. They get angry. They get very, very angry about it. Upset. Non-stop upset. And then it looks like there's a whole lot of stabature coming on over here. So let's go ahead and have him move in for the kill. Whether or not he'll accomplish it remains to be seen. I'm gonna still try. I'm gonna try and feed kills to the Waywatcher if I can, but unfortunately, I just can't get it done. Mage will finish that one off, like the Bamf that he is. 
and then we'll bring in a heal right there. There we go. That's going to leave us with two more attacks on this character. He's still got his two as well. And then we can also mark for judgment this guy. But he's hitting well enough at this point to where we don't really need to worry about it. A fine silver dagger. Chance to cause 10 to 13 damage. That's pretty good. That's not bad. I mean, it could work out pretty well on the Witch Hunter, depending on the dungeon that we go into. I think it's definitely worth equipping if we're doing an undead dungeon, for sure. So I'll keep that. I probably won't sell that. I'll probably keep it in my inventory and then save it for when we need it, like when we go in to do one of the vampire dungeons or something like that. So we can get that extra. 13 damage is a lot of damage. With the greenskins dead to an orc, the adventurers set about hunting for the merchant's stock. A few items such as the odd bolt of cloth or smashed flasks of liquor have been scattered about the dungeon, but the vast majority of the goods are still missing. An eagle-eyed member of your party notices a gap in the base of the fountain. As one, the party shoves the fountain, pushing it aside with a large grinding noise to reveal a secondary room down some sodden steps. Within is the remainder of the merchant's stock, some of it already spoiling due to the damp confines. The party acts quickly to return the goods to the surface, and the two surviving carts are upturned, and soon the caravan is back on the road. Belatedly, the adventurers realize they are in control of two cartloads full of valuable goods. They can, of course, return their wares back to the merchant, who will be grateful and reward in kind. The warriors have also given their word as to what they will do. However, there is nothing stopping the party from taking the caravan to another settlement and selling the goods to another trader for an even greater profit. The larger the settlement, the larger and more in demand the goods and greater the adventurers can sell them for. That's the theory, anyway. Surely the warriors will be heading straight back to Warden to reunite the desperate merchant with the remains of his business? Yeah, we're gonna give him we gave our word. You return the goods to the merchant. He thanks you and gives you a reward. So we got 200 gold. It's not much. I don't know how much we would have gotten if we had gone anywhere else, but Wolvesbach sounds kind of cool. Anybody want to go to Wolvesbach? Let's go up in here. And maybe in the interest of stretching this out a little bit further, not like milking it for episodes. I don't think I ever did the warden animation either, although they all kind of look the same. Well, this one doesn't have mushrooms all over the place. That's a plus. In case you aren't into funguses. They are into, like, large statues put in tiny corridors, though. Alright, well, back up in Warden, we could probably go to the market and sell off something that we got in here. I mean, I don't think we made that much money on the last run, but we did get some Cursed Vambresses. Oh, those are for the Marauder. Never mind, then we'll just sell them. Get as much money as we can. We got the Ring of Fortitude, which I should probably throw onto somebody and probably should have down in the dungeon. But I think that's about it. Aside from the Fine Silver Dagger, we didn't really get much out of that. Not trying to complain right now because the fine silver dagger is a good piece of loot, but still. Let's go to the Way Watcher. What do we have for you? That's going to give wounds. Since I typically use my Witch Hunter in the front, I would say to give that to him. Like, I usually have him follow. If you notice, I always put him in the front lines with the dwarf. And so to even that out, I think it might not be the worst idea to give him the Ring of Fortitude so that he can be a little bit better. If we end up, let's see if we can find an undead dungeon, actually. I'm interested in doing another undead dungeon where we can, like, blaze through and just get a whole bunch of XP for free. What do we have here? We've got Nikolai Lindstein. What is that? The Athel Lorian. Oh, that's a really good amulet for him. Yeah, let's go do it. The Athel, you should really, if you have the Athel Lorian amulet, you should really go after it. I've had this in my other playthroughs before, where if you're using the Waywatcher, it's a really, really good piece of equipment. Anything that gives you a free attack is kind of major, because that's instantaneously. However, it gives you a big chunk percentage increase in your damage per turn. The adventurers enter a crowded tavern in a nameless hamlet, and the patrons grow silent before the first warrior fully crosses the threshold. As one, the locals turn to an ancient drinker propped up against the bar on a rickety stool. You'll be here for the Athel Loran Amuletoid wager, he says between great quaffs of a foamy ale. You're not the first to try, and I doubt you'll be the last, he says. Take the following route. If you return wearing the damn thing on your head, I'll shout you an ale. Shout you an ale? You can shout ale? That's an amazing ability. The locals burst into gales of laughter at that point. The warriors leave, determined to retrieve the item and prove the yokels wrong. All right. So if there's one thing I know you're supposed to risk your life over, it's your personal pride. So let's get on that. That's never a recipe for heartache. Personal pride, you should always risk your life over it. I'm being sarcastic right now, kids. First room. Night Goblin boss and some orc boys. Stepping it on up. Stepping it on up. I think I'm going to put my... Yeah, let's put him right there because these three are all adjacent. So if we can land a triple kill right here, it would be satisfactory. And indeed, he did land a triple kill. One of the few times that my plans have actually gone according to the way that I saw them in my head noodle. On this side, let's get started. Both attacks are going to be going at this enemy right here. Seven damage done. 
take a shot at him. And there's a kill. At least he got that done. On this side, things to be considered. We'll start off with some melee. Maybe a little bit of damage. Three. Five. Just in case you don't know your numbers. And we'll have him maybe... I mean, he's within the threshold where he might get a kill if he double hits, but I doubt it. Okay, so maybe I should... I, I gotta find some way for him to hit more often. I don't know, his hit rate is killing me right now. He needs ballistic skill, but we can't get him ballistic skill until he starts hitting stuff. And, like, leveling up. Get started. I mean, realistically, I could have put him right there, so he could have made an attempt on the other orc, but what are you gonna do? He's getting outclassed right now. He's getting outclassed badly by humies and dwarves. Inside, his elvish pride should be just dying a little bit right now, because he's losing so terribly in the kill count contest. We've got a healing potion. Not that useful, but not that terrible either. Might be useful to bring in as like a second tier item if we get ourselves into trouble later on. Everybody's full up at the moment though, so there's really no point. Gonna end our turn on this side. Drop him on in. We'll have a look right here. Step across the threshold. We got nothing. And so we will continue to walk our party forward in the hopes that we can finish this dungeon quickly and efficiently. I don't know, I've gotten to the point where I start, I've started speedrunning these things as quickly as I can. The room is home to a horrendous stench, such as the fetid smell that some warriors can only involuntarily gag rather than remain in a battle-ready posture. Oh, it lasts for the entire dungeon? Oh, that sucks. Luckily, it happened to the people that I don't typically use with melee attacks, so... I guess that works out. Yeah. I'm not going to complain. Actually, we came out pretty well. As bad as that event can be, we came out pretty solidly with it, so... A stink so bad, you'd swear it was a solid. It's in my mouth. You ever smell something so bad that the smell gets in your mouth? Like it's saturated in the air so much you can taste it? I had a bowl of menudo that was that bad one time. It was awful. Like, typically, menudo's okay. It's not, like, my favorite thing, but I don't hate it either. But I had a bowl of menudo that was so bad that when they brought it to the table, you could taste it, like, in your mouth. And it was like, oh... I ate like a little bit of it, but I was like, nope, I can't do it. This is the worst menudo I've ever had in my life. The helmet can be seen lying upon a raised dais just beyond the doorway, but even as the warriors contemplate advancing to grab it, a menacing orc boss emerges from behind the dais with a group of minions. The creature gives a leering smile, taunting the adventurers to enter the chamber. Oh, you lot! You want this little helmet, right? There it is. Everybody likes my orc impression, so I'll give it to them. I am a crowd pleaser. You gets is ready for Zogan. And if you don't know, zogging is the technical orcish term for kicking the shit out of somebody. Crumpin works as well. Crumpin is basically the same thing. So you can either be crumping or you can be zogging. It really doesn't matter. Both of them accomplish the same task. Because of the stench, I'm going to have him shoot a... Yeah, just fire that over there. I don't know how much good it's going to do, but... Actually, that did a lot. I'm surprised. That actually did pretty well. Fire another one. Give them another volley. Everyone that we can kill, I would like to kill. Hey, there it is. Got himself a kill. You finally killed something. Good for you, man. Good for you. Five damage right there. It's too little too late, but maybe he'll be able to earn himself a little bit of XP before we go much further. All right. Stand still so I can hit you with me, Chopper. Maybe it was stand still. I gotta, like, change it around a little bit. That's not like a word that... Oh, you get... Stand still so I can hit you with me, Chopper. There we go. That's a little bit better. You gotta practice it, though. My girlfriend looks like I, at me like I'm crazy when I practice that in the shower. But seriously, if you want to do any sort of like... Wait, did we just get more spawns? Oh, shit. That's not good. Alright, everybody. About face. Really? Come on, man. Killing me right now. Since he's got stench, I don't have much faith that this is actually going to work. But we'll give it a go. I need him to step over to here and handle this problem for me post-haste and turn all of these orcs into post-paste. We don't have anything right there. We don't have anything right there. He's got nothing left that he can do. Actually, he can shoot a shadow bolt in there. I mean, he's not out of points yet. Go for it. Well, I was hoping it would kill both of them, but you take what you get. I'll take one kill over no kill. Big hit right there. I think he gets two swings as well, so yeah, it's going to be a little bit of damage right there. Luckily, he can't really step forward to cause any further damage. Otherwise, I'd be slightly paranoid that he'd get himself killed. But what I am going to do right now... Oh, no, he got the kill. Never mind. All right, well, we will Void Master him right now, just in case we get another spawn on the next turn. On this side. I think you can, like, save me from having to walk all the way down this hallway. I'm feeling lazy. There we go. Fantastic. 
Well done. He's back. We got a 1 to 5 hand axe. Kind of a useless piece of gear. The relic's current owner is slain. With all the monsters dead, the warriors sheath their weapons, tired but victorious. They quickly locate the Atholoran amulet. It is part of a larger horde, which the adventurers, as professional treasure hunters, are happy to take as well. After all, if they don't claim it, somebody or something else will. We got 100 gold, and obviously the Atholoran amulet. That's going to give our character one more ranged attack, our Way Watcher. It's also going to make him much harder to hit in melee combat, which is the added bonus right there. It makes him very sort of misty. Hard to hit, makes him dexterous. He dodges around a lot more. He only got two kills in there. Bumming me out right now, man. I'm trying to get you to catch up, and everybody else is just lapping you at the moment. Lapping you. All right, back in we go. We should probably go to... Did we ever do the one in Wurtbad? Let's go back to Wurtbad and see what we can handle here. I mean, obviously, if we got ourselves, like, a suitable dungeon over here, I should check all the loot just to make sure. That's for the Marauder, I think. Yeah, the Axe of Slicing. It's pretty good, but it's for the Marauder. That's also for the Marauder. Lots of Marauder loot around right now. What is that? Master Craftsman's Shield for the Ironbreaker. Okay. Uninterested. Onward we go. I think we have Wurtbad remaining, and I think we have Wolvesbach remaining. And that should be the final two quests. I said we are going to do Sterling. The game is kind of repetitive. Like, there's not that much loot. There's not that much stuff to do in the game. It really is sort of an iPhone game with regards to, like, you're supposed to play it for, like, 20 minutes at a time. And if you do that, actually, don't play this game in, like, big four or five hour bursts. I mean, I've got, like, 40 hours played at this point. And I do like the game, but it's definitely not an LP game. It's a game that if you played the board game, it's easy to play on your own, but... It's, it's a difficult game to LP, I think. Oh, no, we have no quests over here, which means there's something we missed over on this side. Maybe it's over in Mensburg. Ooh, going to Mensburg. That'll make some people in our party happy. I think that's for the Bright Wizard, yeah. Axe of Slicing. They're trying to give that thing away right now. Hmm. Let's go to Wolvesbach. We'll find out, see what's over here. Maybe we'll do an extra quest just to, like, give a little bit more content for the people that want it so that it doesn't feel like I'm rushing through to finish. Wolvesbach. In Wolves Botch, we have a lovely gargoyle statue. That thing would creep the hell out of me at night. I don't like things that stand around in the middle of the night. Eh. It's just like open closets at night. Eh, I don't play that either. I'm a grown-ass man, but there are certain things that set me ill at ease. Lying close to the haunted hills of Sturhugel is the village of Wolvesbach. As the adventurers approach, they are met by a hunched old woman swathed in black, struggling to drag a large sack along the road. She lifts her head in greeting, revealing a hideous crone's visage. There's nothing for you here, she states in a craggy voice. The villagers will treat you like they do me, with fear and suspicion. The fools have no idea I've been keeping them safe this past year, but there's only so much these old legs can do. Now that you're here, maybe you can share the burden. We're infested around these parts. With that, she opens her sack wide to reveal a very large spider. The spider is the size of a large dog, but thankfully its legs are curled up, showing it to be quite dead. The crone pokes it with her heavy walking stick, the actual weapon she used to club it to death, apparently. There's plenty of these things scuttling around the Sturhugel and beyond, reaching as far as Marburg, if the man or if the if the whispers are to be believed. They're getting bolder as well. I caught this one skulking outside a sleeping child's window, says the crone, poking the carcass with a thick stick, walking once again. Still, you'll have to find their nests and kill the queen spider. The progeny will quickly die without her for sucker. Now, I know your types. You'll want a reward. You won't be getting anything from them in great, she says, pointing the stick behind her to Wolvesbach. You'll be lucky if they don't spit on you. No, come to me. I've got money. I've got no money, but I'm a dab hand at potions and tinctures. I'll need some ingredients, of course. The queen can provide you, or the queen can provide you everything you need. Once you have slain it, bring me an eye for vigor, the venom for fury, or its blood for restoration. The crone points her stick southwards. I live a league in that direction. If you survive, come find me and I'll bring you something special. That she takes her leave, dragging the sack and its dead contents in the direction of her home. The hills have spiders. Alright, well we should check the market. Because, eh, we might as well spend the cash if we got it. We got a decent sword over there. A ring of agility. What does that do? Chance to ignore a blow. Okay. I don't know if that's a ring that I would ever want to wear at a party, but, you know, you do what you gotta do, I guess. The Ring of Regeneration is really, really good. Ring of Greater Strength is pretty decent as well. The Greater Sure Striking would be even better. The Ring of Regeneration, though, is the one that I'm eyeballing. Does he have a blue ring on already? Our Troll Slayer, that is. He does not. Ring of Regeneration might be a decent call for him. We got a nice selection of phalange adornments here. Pretty stoked about it. Do I have any junk? I was going to say, I don't think I have any junk right now. I forgot to equip the Athelorian amulet as well. Let's throw that on him. And I think that goes down here.
It'll swap out his other one, though, which gives him an extra max wound, but who cares? One max wound is like nothing to worry about. We'll give him... A potion of swiftness, I guess, just in case we need him to do work on a turn. Gives him an increased chance to hit things with his bow. Probably work out for us. Wood Elf Amulet, we'll get rid of that right now. We'll get rid of the Hand Axe for a little bit of extra dosh. And then up out of here... We'll go adventuring. What do we have laying around here? Well, if there's an undead one, we've got the Armor of the Wildwood. That's for the Way Watcher. That gives toughness and movement. We've got a shoulder pad over here for the Marauder, which is looking pretty good. Nice and crimson. But nothing they're offering that's looking amazing. So I think we'll probably just go after the Spider Quest. That's probably the longest silence in any episode ever for me. The adventurers have a knack for tracking fell creatures. That's what they're paid to do. They follow a trail that leads into the Sturhugel. After a half day's march from the Wolvesbach, they locate a craggy opening in the ground covered in thick webbing. It's time for the Dungeoneers to head underground and hunt out a mother and her eight-legged children. I hope you're not afraid of spiders. I'm not a big fan, but I'm not afraid of them either. Like, I'll let a, a smaller spider crawl on my hand when I take it outside if it has to. But I don't like big tarantulas and shit. I had a friend who had a tarantula and he was always like, you should hold it. Like, no, I don't like your tarantula. He's like, she has a... He was like, she has feelings and everything, man. I was like, I don't buy that for a second. That is a huge, huge spider that I feel like it probably hates everybody. I'll probably... This is a bad idea, but I'm going to do it anyways. Let's start off with some spider hunting. Because the less spiders that are around, the happier I am. So if we can kill off a couple of these, it will make our lives easier. So there's a couple spiders. Let's hope for some death blows now. Oh, yeah, that's right, huh? Unfortunately, that didn't work out the way I wanted it to. I didn't think well enough. Oh, well. We've got enough, like, steel daggery things to make this work. Wait. I want him... To, there we go. Shadow daggers. That's what I'm looking for. Shadow a daggers. Finishing everybody off. On this side, we have enough magic to do a shadow bolt to right there. So that's all the spiders out of the combat. So if you're wondering why I'm going after spiders so aggressively... The spiders can actually, they bog your guys down and they make it so that anybody that makes an attack roll against them instantly succeeds. This can be a fairly major problem if you're not ready for it. So I tend to focus on the spiders first, especially if the spiders are acting in league with other things. Oh good, we got wogged. That's unfortunate. Wogged and flogged. So anyways, if you're webbed, you don't get a dodge roll anymore. You just get hit automatically. Or they don't get to do an attack roll, you just get hit. Oh, we got a couple of orcish friends that came along. And because we got ambush, we're not going to get any magic on this turn. It's part of the rules. We'll go ahead and stab this orc, I guess. That'll give us a death blow and get rid of those two. That leaves me with a shot on him. Which is going to miss, unfortunately. He could have moved and got out of the way, but I don't know. I felt like taking a swing for some reason. I guess I'll probably leave him where he's at and get rid of this guy so that our archer doesn't take a bunch of damage on this turn. Unless he gets really, really lucky, which he did. Unfortunate. Alright, well, since luck does not appear to be on our side, they're going to cast... Here we go! Unfortunately, it's not really going to do much for him. He hit me for like one damage right there on this side. Oh, good, he went after the... Went after the Troll Slayer. That's alright by me. That's better than my poor, haggard-looking Way Watcher at this point. I guess I'll give him the kill, if he can actually seal the deal right there. There it is. So we're out of the combat. 270 for the battered dwarven helm. We got another ring of toughness. So there it is, another 1400 gold. That was actually a pretty hard mark. That's a pretty high marked quest for us. We got a lot of loot out of it already. It's already turned out to be far more lucrative, far more pecuniary than a lot of our other quests. Pecuniary is a good word. Kids, you should use pecuniary. Pop that one out on the parents at dinner one night. They're like, pecuniary. It just means that something has, like, financial, so... If you're, like, in a pecuniary sense, you're saying just in a financial sense. Or with regards to money. That's all that you're saying. This has pecuniary benefits. You're saying that, like, it will benefit your financial situation. You will make money off of it. In here, it looks like everything's okay. Nothing jumping out, popping out, or otherwise trying to digest us. I prefer not to be digested right now. I just got new shoes, and digestional fluids on your new shoes is... That's serious business right there. That's serious business. I'm going to move him to right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cast Void Master on him while we wait. There it is. And so we'll move this over to here. I wonder what happens if somebody's in that square when he comes back. I don't want to test it because I'm afraid of what will happen. But 
another empty room. It looks like we're going to have a quick quest that we're going to be able to throw to the wind real fast. Unless we get ambushed a whole bunch of times, it should be fast anyways. Alright, 8 willpower right there. Let's bring everybody down. Or, you know, I think you can rotate the map. So, yeah, whatever direction you want it to be. We could bring everybody up if we wanted to. Yeah. There we go. We're going to bring... I feel more positive doing this. Six winds of magic. Unfortunately, not a lot. A giant spider. Oh, it's not the end of the dungeon. We may actually... There's a reaction strike right there. The unfortunate thing about the reaction strike... Well, actually, no. It just looks like it's a flat benefit. Never. Is that an orc boss right there? What is that? A big orc boss. Okay, so he's got cutting edge blade and armor of carnage. What the hell does that mean? Ooh, it gives him a bunch of toughness. This may be the combat for Elixir of Strength. Yep. You can tell because it's making the sound of a car door every time you hit him. And I have not a single Bowie knife to be exerted in order to cut him out of it. Ooh, you messed up, enemies. You messed up bad. That was not the way you wanted to spawn. Kill right there. Have him pick off some of the little guys while he's at it. Okay, or miss a whole lot. I don't really mind. You can miss a whole lot too. It doesn't hurt my feelings at all. It hurts my trust of you a lot, but... Alright, death blow right there. Chaos armor actually looks like it's negating his damage entirely. Shoot a shot at him real fast. Hey, five damage done. We could also use marked for judgment right here if we really wanted to use up some willpower, but I'm going to wait. The orc boss, I think he gets three attacks. I wasn't paying attention. I should probably look better. Let's go ahead and speed it up. Four damage right there. A little bit of damage right there. So nine. Ooh, actually 15. Oh, shit. Two more big bosses. Okay, so that's problematic. Big time problematic. How do I want to solve this? Well, first and foremost, we're going to have to use provisions on somebody. So there's six wounds back. Let's get rid of him first. Take the shot. I was going to say, if I could free him up from pinning, it would make him easier to kind of handle this. I don't know. Ooh, this got real fast. Okay, so... Fish out a death blow right here, baby. There we go. If he can finish off most of these rats, we'll be in really good shape. There it is. Nicely done. Nicely done. Brought together well. We'll go ahead and fire a couple arrows at him. Maybe it'll help out a tad. They got 55 health, though, so this might get a little rowdy. Especially considering he is not in any position. I may need him to leap of faith. That takes him to a random spot, right? A random empty space in his movement range, yeah. Alright, well it's time to get in right here. We still have no magic. So I'm going to pop a... Well, I'm going to move him to right there first. We'll figure this out shortly. On this side. He's got two attacks left. Let's just use those. Alright, so since that's been used... That leaves him with few options. God, this just got intense quick. He does have reserve magic right now that we could technically use. Unfortunately, nobody can move around right now. So it comes down to how I want to do this. Lightning Fire Ring is probably conducive to our survival, so I'm going to use that real quick. It only did 17, though, unfortunately. I was hoping it would do a lot more. It does 5 to 30, so actually we scored on the upper end of the threshold. Take a couple swings at him, although with his toughness as high as it is. Do they all have that, or does only one of them have it? Oh, some of them do, some of them don't. What does a Cursed Black Blade do? Oh, the plus 3 strength. That's what's getting us right there. Okay, Leap of Faith. And he went the wrong direction. Alright, well. I'm going to Void Master him, I guess. Unfortunately, this is probably going to fall down on everybody else now. Use a lesser scroll. Oh no! I didn't realize that was an AoE until it was too late. I pushed it. Okay, so let's use the Potion of Swiftness as well. Because I believe that's going to make him a little bit better at ducking things. This is going to get nasty real quick, though. We could lose our wizard, potentially. This was not the wisest decision on my part. Hopefully... Oh, he's got three attacks? Oh, my God. 
We might get Tyrannosaurus wrecked right here. These big bosses. That's probably, that's really bad luck that we just got right here. He's going to be kind of dodgy though because of the potion of swiftness. So he should be able to stay out of the way. And on the next turn, he should be able to actually do a lot better too. So did that only last for one turn? Really? What a shitty potion. Okay, so never mind then. That was a terrible plan and did not work out at all. On this side, what we need to accomplish. Is he still pinned? He's still pinned. Okay. You, sir. Well, let's start off here. There's three damage. We'll fire some arrows over there. Accomplish nothing from what I can tell. His potion of strength is done. Did, chaos armor? What? Chance to chaos armor. How, how explanatory. Okay. Well. Let's go for some healing mist and hope we don't roll a bunch of ones. Okay, so there's a five. I'm going to dig a little further into those reserves. I'm going to gray college hat. For five more power, which should give him enough to blade of night him once or twice. And maybe, I don't know, we don't have a whole lot going for us right now. I can shadow dagger, I guess. That actually might be a reasonable way to deal some damage, in all honesty. Let me get rid of him first. And then I can haunch of old Nell himself, I guess. Who said that old Nell isn't helpful? Okay, let's give it another go. We could lose somebody right here. It's very, very likely with the amount of attacks that they're being able to unleash. Yeah, he's down. Okay. A lot of the fights in this game seem really, really imbalanced. I don't want to take a second to like... It said it's for level 4s, and everybody here is level 4 except one guy. I can't imagine that one more guy being level 4 would fix this. Like, it seems like the hit rate is just too high on some of these enemies. Like, I just... I don't know what to do about it. So we got him right here. We have to get rid of him. If we don't get rid of him, we're going to be hurting badly. Let me see if I can get him back up. He's got no winds of magic. Since they're all pinned, it might be a wise choice to pull him out right now. And just use him solely as a healer for the time being. I was putting him in kind of like an awkward situation, but you do what you gotta do, I guess. I'm gonna use medium provisions on him. Maybe keep him up for another turn. Ten more damage dealt right there, but wow. A little bit more damage. I think I'm gonna go all in. Like, I don't really know what else to do here. Like, we need these guys to go away. He's got Shaken Will, which is bad. But let's just keep it going. We're down to three attacks at this point. All we can hope is that he misses, because we don't really have any of the things to, like, help out with this. With his Winds of Magic now, what I want to do is we will... Let's wait on that. We'll have him take a couple swipes and see where we end up. There's six. Can't hit nothing today. Come on now, Elf. Chaos Armor ignoring things left and right. Move into here. Get a couple hits off. There it is, finally. Woo! -hoo -hoo. And we got a potion of toughness out of it. Oh my god, that's the worst. Like, there needs to be... They need to tabulate... How this needs to work is they need to look at the gold value of the enemies you killed. And the loot table needs to shift upwards based on the gold value of the enemies that were killed. Because as it stands right now, you really don't get reimbursed for hard fights like that. Like, that fight cost us money, basically. You saw how many items we used just to survive that. I'll see you on the next episode. I do, everybody. I think that's going to be the end for us.